Good morning. Welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Jack Keating, and I am blessed to be the pastor at Emmanuel United Methodist Church, the Church of the Bells here in Camillus, New York. We're glad that you're with us today for worship as we're going to celebrate the third Sunday after Pentecost today. We're going to hear some great music and uh, have a chance to pray and offer our praise to God. We're also celebrating today Father's Day. That's this weekend, and uh, and we hope all of the dads out there are, know how special you are, and uh, we celebrate your special day with you. And we're uh, glad to welcome today worshipers far and wide. And speaking of that, we've got a little contest running here at the church to see who are the folks worshiping with us uh, during this month of June from the farthest away from our home here in Camillus, New York. So if you're watching us in some other part of the country or maybe even some other part of the world, will you drop me an email at pastorjackk at gmail.com? Let me know your location and uh, let me know as well if uh, somebody recommended that you watch this worship service. We're going we're gonna to kind of chart and see where people are worshiping with us from all around the world. We give thanks that you're with us today, and we're going to get ready to warm up our hearts for worship with some great music. So Dan and Lisa, take it away. Thank you. 
join your hearts with mine in prayer. Gracious God, you gather us here this summer morning as we welcome a new season. Your presence is made known to us in the beauty that surrounds us with flowers, birds, rain, and sunshine. Summer activities speak of life and joy in our community. And yet, as we look around and listen to the news, we recognize that all is not well with our world. We confess we sometimes wonder what it is we are called to do. Forgive our faltering faith and bless us, O God, with a spirit of discernment in our decisions, with compassion in our conversation, with love in our listening, with perseverance in our praying, and above all, with hope that holds us in all seasons. Amen. Today I'd like to ask you to join your heart with mine as together we confess our sins before God. Sometimes, O oh God, we forget people or we toss them aside, the, the difficult ones, the needy ones, the ones that are hard to spend time with, the ones who confront us. And sometimes when we do things like that, it's not really about the other people. It's about us. We are uncomfortable. We feel guilty. We follow brighter, shinier things. Or we worry about what will make us look good. We are in such desperate need of your forgiveness. We need to be forgiven of our sins, of our mistakes, of our mistaking what the world values with what you value. So we pray that you'll help us to be better and to see more clearly and to care more thoroughly. In Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. A reading from Genesis 21, verses 8 through 21. Hagar and Ismael sent away. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skim of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then set her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bowshot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans 6, verses 1 through 11. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died for sin once for all. But the lives he, life he lives, he lives for God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, we pray that you'll speak in this place, speak in the calming of our minds and in the longing of our hearts. Speak by the words of my lips and in the thoughts that we form. Speak now, O oh Lord, for your servants are ready to listen. Amen. You know, I have uh, many pleasant memories of my childhood, and I have a great love for my father. Yet, I must tell you that it was not always this way. At one time, 
bad memories fought with good memories. And the feeling in my heart was not one that was calculated to honor my father. Although there was always in me a great longing for him. Thank God there are not many families in which this struggle between good memories and bad memories has to be fought out. There is so much good around us, and so many parents do such a great job of loving their kids. But in some families, injustices have to be overcome. And I dare say, in all families, there are things that must be forgiven and things that must be forgotten. In fact, a friend of ours who works for Child Protective Services told Becky and I one day these sage words. In your dealings with your kids, remember this. You are going to do something once or twice a month that will scar your children for life. Imagine that. We are all going to make mistakes. And those mistakes will affect our kids for the rest of their lives. Now that fact could make somebody really nervous. Yet, it didn't do that for that worker. And it doesn't do it for me. It doesn't worry me because when I look back, I see mistakes aplenty that I made and mistakes aplenty that my father and my mother made. And yet, despite this, I think my kids are doing rather well. And I feel that I myself have come a long way since the days of my childhood. The scars I bear are now trophies. The wounds I suffered are now sources of healing. And the good that I received glows brighter than it did before. For all of which, I thank God. A lot of fathers worry about what is normal and what is not. They fret about whether or not they're doing the right thing for their kids. They worry about how to please God. And they worry about how to please their wives, who are second only to God, after all and they worry about how to set their kids on the right path. All this and many other concerns fill their hearts and their minds, and we honor them as we should when we remember this and we celebrate their humanity and their love. But today my sermon is not addressed so much to fathers as to all who will hear, all who are by our very existence children of fathers. I want to say to you who have had a blessed childhood or who have come to realize in your later years that no matter what your childhood was like, it was really good enough, to you I say praise the Lord and celebrate what you have learned and what you have received. And for those of you who have been wounded and those who have been scarred, I want to tell you about the joy of getting past the past and discovering the new life that Paul refers to when he says, If we have been united with Jesus in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the Old Testament reading today, that story of how Sarah asks Abraham to cast his son Ishmael and her mother Hagar out of their home so that Sarah's son, Isaac, might inherit everything. Abraham, as we have heard, was very distressed by this request, and yet finally convinced that this was God's will, that God would bless Ishmael, he complies with the request of his wife, and he sends Hagar and the boy out into the wilderness with only a little bread and a skin of water, which soon runs out, and leaves Hagar in desperate despair, convinced that both she and her son would surely die. Now, looking back on that situation, the decision of Sarah and Abraham we would do well to be horrified. 
And if we were Ishmael, we would most certainly bear the scars for the rest of our lives. But my friends, remember back to the end of the story, the end which our reading hints at but does not fully cover, the end where we see that God makes a nation of Ishmael as he promised, with 12 princes over 12 tribes coming from his line. The end which tells us that Ishmael lived 137 years before he was gathered to his people. The end which notes that especially that Ishmael, the son who was cast forth, would one day return home and with his half-brother Isaac bury his father in peace. We do not know how that peace came about. The Bible is silent about it. But I want to assure you as a father that Abraham longed for that day, that day of reconciliation. And as a son, I can tell you, Ishmael desired to be at peace with his father. Decisions like that Abraham made concerning Ishmael can really hold up a person. They really leave a mark on us. But there is, in the end, my friends, the promise and the hope that wholeness can be restored and the marks transformed. We see it with Ishmael and Abraham, and we see it in ourselves and in our parents. We can see wholeness, and we will experience it when we do three simple things. First, we must own the past and we must recognize it for what it is and what it has done. Second, we must forgive those things in the past that need forgiving. And third, we need to submit the future to the love of God and trust God to transform it. Moving past our past is not always as easy as it might be, especially the negative parts of it. Many people tend to deny the pain, to lightly pass over how they felt rejected or unloved, and so they have big problems being set free from it. And that's kind of like working on a car with an engine that won't start. Until you track down the particular problem and begin to fix the engine, all the other work that you do on the car is going to seem pointless even though it isn't. It's an important step in the new life that Christ gives us to acknowledge and identify the hurts which we have received, because only then can the wounds be healed and the scars truly transformed. When Hagar and Ishmael left the camp of Abraham and ran out of water and out of hope, God comes to them. Hagar then recognizes the voice that tells her that God has heard the cries of her child. The God who hears, hears her and hears her child. God opens her eyes to see the life-giving water right there before her. And Ishmael goes on to become the father of 12 sons. And together with his brother Isaac, he would return to his homeland to bury his father. The relationship of father and son then is not ended. It was changed. In our baptism, we die with Christ. We are baptized into his death and we are buried with him. That's the words we use. And this so that we too might walk in the newness of life so that we too might grasp and hold on to the reality that we are no longer bound to live within the very human limitations that we were born with, so that we too may no longer be enslaved to our past. In Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, we get a glimpse of ourselves, I think, as we sometimes are when we forget, like them, the promises of God. And yet we too, 
like Hagar and Sarah and Abraham, can also see that despite our circumstances, God is present and God promises to be real and that God will work things out for us the way they should be worked out. But if we open our eyes to God and place ourselves in God's hands, we receive those promises. Every Christian father and every Christian mother has a responsibility that goes way beyond just providing food and clothing and shelter and a nurturing environment, way beyond teaching what's right and what's wrong, way beyond manners and civic duty. Fathers and mothers are also to point to God to provide a glimpse of what God is like for their children. Mother and father are called to be alive to God in front of their children to show forth God's blessings and to claim God's promises. We may not do that perfectly, nor even well at times, nor may have our parents, but yet we have the assurance that if we try to be alive with God, if we own and forgive the past as Christ forgives us, that we too will receive and impart to our children beloved glimpses of God on the salvation that has been promised for us from the beginning of time. Praise be to God. Amen. I want to ask you now if you will join your heart with mine as together we come before God in our morning prayer. We come to you, O Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts, for we know that you hear and answer us when we call upon you for help. You hear because you are not a distant God, but instead a God who journeys with us in the person of Jesus Christ. You answer because you are compassionate and kind and you want all people to know your love. You who are the shepherd to all who turn to you, we pray that you would bless fathers this day and all parents Bless those parents who have already passed through this life and those who are still with us today. Let them hear from heaven and know here on earth our gratitude towards them for the good that they have shared and for our eager desire that they might grow closer, even closer to you. Oh God, we pray for all the children of the world those who are young and those who are old, those who have lost their way, those who have been orphaned by divorce or indifference or death, that they may know where to turn for the love they need and the guidance they require each day. Feed the hungry. Heal the sick. By your Spirit and by all who answer your Spirit's call to go forth and do your will, make us whole once again. O oh God, we pray today for those who you have placed upon our hearts, those you have called us to care for in prayer and in action, those whom we know and those whom we do not know. We ask for your prayers now to surround them. Lord, in this time, hear our prayers. Oh God, we thank you for giving us the tears of love and care for seeking us out when we were lost, and for being to us all that we need. And we ask you now to hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As many of you might know, who attended last week's worship service, held in the front parking lot of the church, I began a series of what I'm calling Unity Moments in response to the tragic murder of George Floyd and the racism that exists in the world in which we live, even racism that exists within ourselves. And we may deny it all that we want and really believe that we do not have a racist bone in our body, but God knows that that is not always the truth. I've begun thinking recently about what it means to be an inclusive people. And I have come to realize that being an inclusive people is not enough. We are called to be anti-racist people. Let me give you an example of the difference. I think an inclusive person is one who teaches their kids that people matter more than skin color. While an anti-racist person teaches their kids that skin color deeply affects how people view us. You see the difference there? It's a subtle difference, but it's important difference. You see the problems with strategies that are based solely on inclusivity and diversity is that they assume a level playing field for all. While anti-racism recognizes that racist beliefs have permeated our entire culture and created systemic problems. Rather than just talking about it, anti-racism asks that we actively work against it. In the next week or so, you'll begin hearing about a course on justice issues that I'm going to be teaching online via Zoom. And I hope that you'll take advantage of the opportunity to be a member of this session time with us. Zoom is an easy program to use. We will be glad to help you through it. All you have to do is have a device, a laptop, or an iPad that has the availability of a camera and a speaker and a microphone. And we can connect you through Zoom to be together in a class where we're going to look at moving from being an inclusive church and society to being an anti-racist church and society. I hope that you will avail yourself of this class and that you will take the time to be part of our learning so that we truly can move forward to be the church and the people that God asks us to be. May it ever be so. Amen. We pause now to give thanks to our God for the many wonderful gifts that God has given to us. We are grateful for each and every one of you and your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. We are so blessed by all that you do and all that you are to make this great church. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all blessings, you have been extravagant in your generosity. You have planted within us the seeds of hope. You have nurtured within us the saplings of faith. You have harvested the fruits of your creation and spread before us the feast of all possibility. Words cannot express the gratitude with which we come before you. May we embody our thanks with extravagant generosity. May we offer our lives to you in acts of compassion for one another. May we walk gently upon the earth 
ever mindful of your gifts of breath, of love, of life itself. Amen. I'd like to take some time now to share with you some news and announcements in the life of our church. This past Tuesday, there was a small group of us that were able to go and visit all of our kids club families and we were able to give them uh, coloring books and ice cream sandwiches and it was great to see their smiles and hear about their time and, and know that school is over and they can now enjoy the summer. Let's hope they can enjoy the summer. We'd like to thank Lisa Miller for donating all of the ice cream and also thank Ashley for organizing uh, the event and the maps and getting us all together. It was a lot of fun. We were also able to give our second graders their Bibles. We had a Bible for Carly and Catherine and they had great big smiles and we're really happy to receive those. So we pray God's blessing upon them as they dig into the Word of God. We'd like to also thank Chris and Aaron Paoli. They have been very faithful leaders for our youth, both in the uh, Sunday school classroom and in our youth group. They have continued to connect with our youth through this time of pandemic with uh, online game nights and uh, opportunities for via our Facebook page. So we thank Chris and Aaron for all of their work with our youth. On Mondays, we continue our coffee chat with pastors. It's at 10 a.m. and it's via Zoom. You're more than welcome to join us. We have lots of room and it's a time for fellowship and checking in with each other. And it's great to uh, be able to see each other's faces and see how everybody's doing. Now on Wednesdays, we have our midweek praise and worship service at 2. Uh, that's also via Zoom. And it's just a time just sort of pause in the middle of the week and share some praise of our God and, and some prayers. And we'd love to have you join us uh, to be in either of those Zoom meetings. All you need to do is send an email to Pastor Jack at pastorjackk at gmail.com and he will send you an invitation. If you're not able to join us in person and you have some prayer requests, you can also email those to Jack and we will certainly include them with our prayers. Last Sunday, we were able to gather together in person at, for worship. It was wonderful in our parking lot. It was a beautiful sunny day, and it was just great to be together. We will continue to do that through the summer at 9 o'clock on Sundays. You need to bring your own chair and wear your mask, and we'd be glad to see you. If you are away and you're not able to come or you're just not ready to come yet, we understand, and we will continue to provide the recorded online worship via our website, www.churchofthebells.org. And I think that's it. Oh, wait, no, I wanted to let you know also the building remains closed. Our staff will continue to work remotely, but we are available. If you need us, you may call the church office or send an email. We will get back to you as soon as we can. We're available to chat, uh, just to, if you just want to check in, if you have something going on you need to talk about, we really encourage you to, to get in touch with one of us. So with that, let us settle our hearts and our minds for a time of song, and our next song is Grace Alone.
So friends, go in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Christ Jesus. And may the love of God our Father bless you and keep you. May the love of God the Son, the one who is our brother and our Lord, surround and fill you. And may the love of God the Spirit guide you and strengthen you on your journey this day and forevermore.